Here's a wild one. Students at the University of Michigan will be forced to leave campus temporarily if they test positive for COVID. This is according to reporting that I did for Reason Magazine. These extreme measures intended to prevent the virus from spreading will require infected students leave their dorm rooms for five days, live elsewhere, uh, like a hotel, or even go back home with their relatives, a move that I worry would actually make transmission worse. Professor of Medicine and Health Policy at Stanford University, Jay Bhattachara, called attention to the policies on X, writing, quote, this cruel policy is designed to spread COVID from the university into the wild. It won't stop COVID from spreading among the students. So I think this is uh, probably a, a fair concern, Robbie, to bring up about what's going on with COVID here. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's going around again. Obviously, we know there's a spike in COVID-19. But to say, you know what, go home and infect your families. How are students going to pay for transportation? I'm sure there are students that are there on Pell Grants who have nowhere else to go. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so this policy applies to everyone living in dormitories, even if you live in a single, you know, like a like a, a room by yourself. Um, you are supposed to leave. So you're supposed to, if you test positive, you're supposed to report that test to the university health system. If you're if you test through the university health system, they already have that information, and they will reach out to you to coordinate you leaving campus. They they only want you to go back home if you can get there within a day, I think. And, and if you if the if you have a room at your your parents' house or whatever to yourself, which might not always be the case. Elsewhere, they, they want you to stay in a hotel, um, which, as you point out, is just is maybe it's not financially feasible um, for, for some people. Um, but so anyway, I see a number of problems. One, um, yes, going home, go, like, traveling at all. Like they say, don't use public transportation. You know, don't use Uber. Um, drive yourself or have someone drive you. Again, the reality is it's a lot harder than that for a lot of students. This seems like it's going to spread the virus potentially to people who are more at risk. Uh, like your 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 dorm roommates are, are 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 the least at risk of serious health outcomes unless they have some underlying health condition. They're going to be um, at less risk than your parents or your grandparents. So that's one issue. The other issue is like let's be real. If if they're going to make you leave campus if you test positive, people are just going to not test for COVID. They're not going to go to the medical. Like, if you think you're seriously ill, you're going to avoid going to the hospital in case, you know, you might be still, uh, sick with something else, sick with something you need antibiotics for, but you're going to be afraid to go to the health system because if you test positive for COVID, which some people test positive, like right, there's fake positives too, you, you're going to get thrown off campus. I mean, it's such a, it's such, this is such a plan cooked up by like literal health people, not people who think about, um, like persuasion or, or you know you, you know what I mean or like black markets that kind of thing um, it seems so obvious to me that this is going to disincentivize people even from from getting medical care that they would actually need yeah I, I think about my school I went to Wells College which was founded in 1868 so it has already endured a plague on campus and there's a part <laughs> of one of the buildings that was like the plague quarantine wing of the campus. And so we've been through plagues or pandemics before. Uh, it seems pretty obvious to me that Michigan should just designate a part of its dorms to a quarantine area. That seems like a very easy solution. They have the dorms already instead of sending students all the way home, which I'm sure disrupts their learning, which they're paying for. Just let them go to a quarantine wing. I mean, it's a tested policy. It's worked in former plagues. Put them all in quarantine together. It seems obvious to me. Uh, so I agree. They say, they do say in the policy that there are, um, well, they say, alas, isolation spaces on campus are extremely limited. Why don't they put more effort into making them less limited, right? Into finding more isolation spots for people to, you know, voluntarily go to uh, who are sick. That would seems like a much better use of the university health system's resources and time than tracking down people, like hunting down people who have positive tests and making them leave campus. Um, it, right. The, the, so I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan. It's a very nice school. It's a very nice campus. It's a lot of extremely fancy buildings. Like the new dorms that they've built since I've been there have like 
TV screens on all the walls and like like fancy, really, really fancy stuff. They got a lot of money. They got a huge endowment. Why don't they, you know, do a little bit of reorganizing and have a designated place for sick people with COVID if they think that's so important? Again, they're not. You're not going to stop this. Like schools are just going to have to reckon with the fact that you know how many waves of COVID have we been through now? You can't shut down the spread. We the, no amount of vaxing or masking or isolating. You know, COVID. Do, <laughs> Rose going to do what Rose going to do. Right? It's, it's people are going to get sick. It's not a moral failing um, if, you're, if you've taken, um, you know, if, if you've gotten vaccinated, if you're at great risk, you've, you've done something to protect yourself. There's a lot of ways you can protect yourself, but it's, it's not a moral failing and it's just going to happen. And I don't know why, school, why, why schools, which are, you know, disproportionately have, uh, have people there who are at least risk, are the most freaked out of all and have the most restrictive, ridiculous policies. Yeah, it's absurd how much school tuition is and that they well, would yeah. ask students to go home. Like they could take the cut for enrollment, admit slightly less students so that you have some more dorms open for them to say, you know, we just have really limited space for, for quarantine. Whose fault is that? You decided to admit students knowing that COVID would be a concern that you'd want to take seriously, clearly. Uh, perhaps take that financial hit and admit slightly less students so you have the quarantine area open. How much are students spending on room and board? If they catch COVID, they can't even live there. Where do they eat? If they go to the quarantine area, are they still having access to the dining right. hall? How do they get food? There's a lot of things that seem to not be fully fleshed out with this policy. And I think it incentivizes kids if they catch COVID to just not tell anyone or not test in the first place. For sure. Yeah, they're going to hide that fact. It's going to be a, it's going to be an underground COVID uh, uh, movement or something like that. Well, co-host of The View, Whoopi Goldberg, was noticeably absent from yesterday's program because she has caught COVID. Here's Joy Behar talking about that. Hey. Um, as you can see, Whoopi is not here. She has COVID. Oh. Yes, it's back. It's oh. back. It's back. But she's on the men. She's on the tail end, and she'll probably be back this week. But sorry, she's not here. For those of you who are looking forward to seeing her. COVID does appear to be rearing its ugly head. Earlier this week, we learned First Lady Jill Biden tested positive. We've, as we've been reporting, there has been a spike in COVID cases and hospitalizations at the tail end of summer. There have been in previous summers uh, always. So this could be a preview of what's to come in the fall. We'll see if this accompanies, uh, if, if the return of various mandates is also going to be happening. Already it's happening in some jurisdictions, in some schools, whether there's you know resistance from the public to broader um, measures, mandates, is something that remains to be seen. I'm expecting it, but uh, we will see, and we'll have more rising right after this.